Alrighty, back in Mondstadt. Actually, I returned to Mondstadt for something kind of cool prior to this. Those keenly observant may have noticed a food item in my inventory that I shouldn't have been able to have. Mushroom pizza. Let's rewind the clock to a time before C4 Electro, to before defeating the Golden Wolf Lord, and even before the theory crafting attempts to obtain Amenoma Kageuchi. Back to the brief time Traveler San had the ability to jump like Mario. Because I totally used it to break into Storm Tear's lair and steal the dragon's recipe for mushroom pizza. How does one get in? Well, it stands to reason that if there's a barrier around the place and yet the dragon can still enter and exit freely, there must be a hole in it somewhere. And what's the one thing a dragon can do that we can't anymore, ever since they patched the awesome Wave Rider glitch? Fly. Devalon flies over the barrier, meaning Traveler San has to go over it as well. Just gotta scale this barrier, and scale this barrier, and scale. Wow, this thing goes really high. And there, over the top. Stealing the pizza recipe is about the only real thing to do in here or gather Animoculus to max stamina without the Archon quest. But we're not leveling stamina on this account, so... But these tornadoes are pretty cool. Another one-time feature for Genshin Impact. This is not the end. <clears throat> Let's uh, return to the present. Alrighty, back in Mondstadt. First order of business is to unlock daily commissions. The quest has been sitting in the journal throughout the entire Inazuma journey. Yes, indeed. Perhaps more than you know. Open the adventurer's handbook. <laughs> Look at that. The icon didn't load in. Wait, what? Okay, I'll use the menu. This is quite the conundrum, but when I ran that test for Aminoma Kagayuchi on my alt account, I did run into something getting stuck and not loading. Logging in and out fixed that, so let's try it. Oh, well then. Error. You could say that again. Let's get to the bottom of this. At first, I thought this meant my adventurer's handbook was glitched. It certainly looks like it. I did some digging through the Genshin fandom wiki and my own quest journal to find something peculiar. Catherine has quite a few quests for new players, but they don't unlock all at once. And despite everything done on this account, story-wise, it's still brand new, having only completed the game's tutorial, those temples with Kaya, Lisa, and Amber. Because I went out to Inazuma and such and built up my adventure rank, more and more of Catherine's new player quests became available. It would seem that, unlike other quests where you'll get a notice saying a character is involved with another quest and cannot proceed with the current, those involving Catherine do not have this notice. Instead, the quests stack. That may not seem any different from other NPCs, but Catherine's stack like a pile. If I wanted to get my adventurer's handbook, I would need to complete all the current quests involving Catherine from newest to oldest, until I got down to the first one assigned, which is the one that gives the handbook. New quests assigned from Catherine seem to stack on top of ones already in progress. When completing the four daily commissions, I hit Adventure Rank 14 and unlocked Expeditions. Despite already being on a quest for her, the new one for Expeditions took priority and needed to be finished before I could continue the daily commissions quest. This is a pretty fascinating oversight in game logic. I could ignore these quests and never get the handbook. I have access to daily commissions and can cash in for the reward by talking to Catherine in a different region, such as Inazuma. And since we break things purely for the sake of doing so on this series, yup, I've decided not to get the handbook for now. Since Traveler San isn't allowed to upgrade his stamina, this isn't too hefty of a blow. After all, he'd be stuck unable to complete even the first chapter. However, this will lock me out of being able to choose which region my daily commissions are in. But that's not really a big deal. Perhaps some future quests involving Mondstadt's Catherine won't stack, and when talking to her, I'll end up getting it. I can think of a few that involve her, 
like Exploding Population for Unlocking Fishing, the first Dane's Lift Archon chapter, Unlocking Daily Commissions in Leeway. Let's test if all those stack, unless something arises that requires me to get the handbook. Uh, adventurer's handbook aside, what I am getting is a trophy from our time in Inazuma. Traveler San's menu is a bit bare, and what better place to flex achievements than with a fancy background here. I looked into what name cards I could get, but all progress based ones for Inazuma require inaccessible quests. This one, Mortal Travails, Series 2, only requires having obtained Electro, and also collecting some books. Uh, let's nab those real quick. Already got the ones in the library long ago, but some are at Don Winery, one's atop this balcony in Mondstadt, and the last is locked behind a quest on Dragonspine. Well, wasn't expecting to go here so soon, but let's go looking for Joel's father. My initial thought on Dragonspine is that it may be a tricky place to conquer. Having no direct access to Pyro will be challenging, as we'll be trying not to die of exposure every couple of minutes. Although, there are a lot of convenient scarlet courts and random lit torches around. Oh, hello there. A challenger approaches. Okay, let's uh, leave this fellow for later. Yikes. Maybe if I had gone in with full health. So, while there are a lot of pyro sources around, they're not always where they're needed. Take this ice pile, for example. It's the second camp on our quest to find Joel's father, and the investigate prompt is locked beneath the ice. There's a torch here, but it's unlit. It's too far away from the nearest pyro source to carry over, and because Dragonspine's grass can't catch fire, the trick we used in Shinju Forest with the Tanuki torches won't work here. Scarlet Court is able to start fires, so that'll be our key. There are some down the hill, too far away to run with our limited stamina, but with Skyrider Sword and a recovery dish, it's no problem. Oh my gosh, why? There we go. Forget lighting the torch, just hit the ice itself. That's the second camp. Here's the third camp. Traveler San fell while teleporting. And that is quest complete, plus adventure rank 15. Gotta say, this short time in Dragonspine really got me pumped for tackling the area. But I really ought to focus on Mondstadt and its Archon quest, since it tends to be a requirement for a lot of events. Beautiful. Hoyoverse, please don't ban me with my blatant advertising that I've broken your game. Since that got us Adventure Rank 15, it's time to ascend Traveler Sign and get those sweet, sweet first ascension talents. Of which Electros is completely useless. Come on. Why's it gotta be limited to other characters picking these things up? Ridiculous. Geo's reduces Starfall Sword's cooldown by 2 seconds. Geo and Animo are going to wreck things once I get Ame no Makageuchi. Gonna be a burst spamming machine. Speaking of Animo, that element is the winner here. This air slash is wonderful. Let me show why in a one time domain, Windy Cliff. This reuses the domain from Amber's Trial but changes a few puzzles. Namely, the part with the pyro monument is replaced with animo slimes. These guys are tricky. I feel like it should be possible to pop them with a plunge attack, but I just couldn't get it to work. You can see Traveler San hits the collision of the slime as he's moved to the side, but the slime remains unfazed. With that problem in mind, let's do this domain in almost one take. Let me say that the older domains are really cool in terms of their terrain and collision. With some parkour, the domain can be climbed without the use of Geo. From here, glide over to this wooden structure. It takes a few tries, but with the right timing, the air slash will pop the animo slime. Use the updraft left behind to glide over here, and repeat the process with this animo slime. Boom. Just like that, the domain has been skipped. This can also be done with Geo, because what can't Geo Traveler do? But it's still a good tool to have, especially since it can be used to activate swirl reactions in specific situations from a distance. Now, if only it could be imbued with whatever element it was affecting Traveler San at the time, like Palm Vortex, or by passing through something on the ground like fire. What a missed opportunity. Okay, that's a wrap on Windy Cliff. I also knocked out Trial, Scorching Fire, and Raging Lightning in the Temple of the Wolf. Not really anything too interesting there, 
as the domain is a series of combat challenges. Nothing in Mondstadt can really stand up to Traveler Sign at this point. The enemies in there got deleted by C4 Electro. To wrap things up, it's time to talk about the wish system. Ever since creating this account, I pondered what all I should allow with wishes. Characters are obviously a no-go, so I won't even be looking at those banners. I will be allowing the weapon banner. My main reason for doing so is that I don't want to lock out weapons that could have uses in solving puzzles or reaching exploration goals. Currently, there are only two swords that offer aid in those situations. Skyrider Sword, which I've got at R1 from Pan, and Sacrificial Sword. I'm not sure where I stand on 5-star weapons, so even if I end up with one, I may not use it. We'll just have to see how tough the game gets when Traveler San is a much higher world level. Sacrificial Sword is on the weapon banner as of this recording, so let's toss some wishes at it. First wish of the account, and first time I have ever wished on the weapon banner on any account. Gotta start with a single one for good luck. Nice. Let's do a tenor. Nice. 11 wishes for Sacrificial Sword. No complaints here. Getting a higher refine would be nice, but for now, uh, this will suffice. I know I said I may not use 5 star weapons, but it would at least be nice to spend wishes on a banner with a 5 star traveler sign could potentially use. And you never know, the future may hold a 5 star sword with a nifty exploration mechanic. How about a quick practical demonstration of Sacrificial Sword? We have before us three Electro Totems with 10 second timers. Since Electro Traveler's skill cooldown is 13.5 seconds, there's no way to activate all three. But if we lure a slime over like so, use the skill, get a reset, use it again on the second monument. Okay, so the slime ended up falling to its death. We need to uh, remove artifacts and toss one of the little slimes this way because they won't walk all the way over here. Activate the first with a skill, get a reset, activate the second with a skill, and then burst to activate the third. Awesome. I love it when a plan comes together, even if it nearly fell apart halfway through. I think by adding the gambler's artifact set to this setup, puzzles with even more monuments may be able to be done if there are enemies in the vicinity. That wraps up this episode. A little interlude, a brief introduction for our return to Mondstadt. Because next time, Traveler San is suiting up to do more of the story. We're going to knock out the entire Monster Archon quest in one go. Using the hard-earned power of C4 Electro Traveler, of course. If you're enjoying the series, do make sure to like, subscribe, and share. I really do appreciate all the support. This is Musashi and Traveler San, signing off. Till next time!